What if the very pollution threatening our planet could be the key to its salvation? A thought-provoking question to kickstart our exploration into a fascinating yet mostly underappreciated field of study. Our planet is in crisis. The air we breathe, the water we drink, even the soil we plant in, is suffering from the weight of pollution. From the skyscraping smokestacks of industry to the smog-laden cityscapes, pollution is an omnipresent specter that continues to haunt us. It's a silent killer, slowly but surely chipping away at our planet's health and vitality. This is no longer a distant problem for future generations to solve. The consequences are here, they're happening now. Rising global temperatures, melting ice caps, devastating wildfires, and the heartbreaking extinction of numerous species, each a stark reminder of the urgency of the situation. But amidst these disheartening realities, there's a glimmer of hope. It's not in the form of elaborate machines or complex technological solutions, but something much more humble, much more in tune with the rhythms of nature. We're talking about harnessing the power of life itself, the power of biology. There's a vast, untapped potential in the microscopic world around us, a potential that could be harnessed to combat the environmental crisis we're facing. What if we could use nature to heal nature? What if the solution to our environmental woes lies not in fighting against the natural world, but in working harmoniously with it? What if instead of trying to eradicate pollution with methods that often create more problems than they solve, we could use the very elements of pollution as a tool for restoration? These are not mere flights of fancy. These are the very questions that scientists and environmentalists around the world are grappling with. And they found a promising answer in the form of bioremediation, a process that uses living organisms to clean up pollution. It might seem like an impossible task, but nature might have already provided us with an answer. Bioremediation, a beacon of hope in the face of an environmental dilemma. Let's delve deeper into this fascinating solution. Bioremediation, a natural process, might just be the game changer we need. But what exactly is bioremediation? Simply put, it's the use of living organisms, predominantly microorganisms, to degrade or transform harmful substances into less toxic or non-toxic substances. It's nature's own recycling system, a biological method of cleaning up the environment. To understand bioremediation, we have to dive a little deeper into the world of microorganisms. These tiny, invisible to the naked eye life forms are everywhere, in air, water, soil, and even inside us. They possess an incredible knack for survival, adapting to various conditions and evolving to eat almost anything, including pollutants. In bioremediation, we harness this natural ability of microorganisms to consume and break down pollutants. It's like hosting a dinner party where the main course is pollution. The microorganisms feast on the pollutants, breaking them down into simpler, harmless substances. It's a win-win situation. The microorganisms get a meal and we get a cleaner environment. Now don't get the idea that we're just dumping a bunch of bacteria onto a polluted site and hoping for the best. It's much more nuanced than that. Bioremediation is a carefully controlled process. It requires understanding the type of pollution, the suitable microorganisms for the job, and the optimum conditions for their growth and activity. But the beauty of bioremediation is in its simplicity and naturalness. It doesn't require heavy machinery or complex chemical processes. It's not about fighting nature, but working with it. It's about creating a conducive environment for these tiny, powerful cleaners to do their job. So to sum up, bioremediation is essentially a process of detoxification carried out by nature's very own cleanup crew, the microorganisms, they're like the janitors of our planet, quietly and efficiently working away to keep it clean and healthy. In essence, bioremediation takes advantage of the natural appetite of microorganisms to clean up our mess. But how does this eco-friendly janitorial service work, you may wonder? Well, the process is quite fascinating. The mechanism of bioremediation relies heavily on microorganisms, such as bacteria, fungi, and algae. They are the unsung heroes in this process, tirelessly working to consume and break down pollutants in our environment. These microscopic organisms are like nature's little waste disposal units. 
They can metabolize a wide variety of organic and inorganic substances, including some that are harmful to humans and other life forms. When these microorganisms come into contact with pollutants, they use them as a food source, breaking them down into less harmful substances through a process known as biodegradation. Let's take oil spills as an example. Certain bacteria, such as Alcanivirax borcumensis, thrive in oil-contaminated environments. These bacteria feed on the hydrocarbons in oil, breaking them down into harmless byproducts like water and carbon dioxide. This process is a form of bioremediation known as biostimulation, where we encourage the growth of these bacteria by adding nutrients to the environment. Similarly, some fungi can break down heavy metals and radioactive substances that are notoriously difficult to remove from the environment. They do this by secreting enzymes that chemically alter these substances, making them less toxic and more manageable. Algae too play a crucial role in bioremediation. They are particularly effective at removing nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus from wastewater, preventing these substances from causing harmful algal blooms in our waterways. However, it's important to note that bioremediation is not a one-size-fits-all solution. The effectiveness of this process depends on several factors, including the type of pollutant, the specific microorganisms involved, and the environmental conditions. But with ongoing research and technological advancements, we are constantly finding new ways to harness the power of these microorganisms for pollution control. So, these microscopic creatures are essentially eating our pollution. Can you believe that? It's like having billions of tiny little janitors cleaning up our mess, one molecule at a time. Isn't nature fascinating? There are several ways to implement bioremediation, each with its own benefits and limitations. Let's start with in situ bioremediation. This is a method where we tackle the pollution right where it is happening without having to move any soil or water. Think of it as a home visit from a doctor for the environment. We introduce microorganisms, nutrients, or other necessary elements into the polluted area and let nature do the rest. This method is often favored because it's cost effective and less disruptive to the environment. However, its success heavily depends on local conditions like temperature, pH, and the type of pollutant. Now let's talk about ex situ bioremediation. Unlike in situ, this method involves digging up the polluted soil or pumping out contaminated water and treating it elsewhere. Imagine it as taking a sick patient to a hospital where conditions can be controlled. This method can be more effective because we can carefully manage conditions to optimize the cleanup. However, it often requires more resources and can be more disruptive as it involves moving large amounts of soil or water. Within these two broad categories, there are more specific types of bioremediation. For example, bioventing is a type of in situ bioremediation where we pump air into the soil to stimulate the growth of indigenous microorganisms. On the other hand, composting is an ex situ method where we mix contaminated soil with composting materials to encourage the growth of microbes that can break down pollutants. Bioremediation can also be carried out naturally, where we monitor natural attenuation processes and ensure they are effectively cleaning up the pollution. Or it can be engineered, where we deliberately manipulate conditions to optimize the cleanup. Each of these methods has its strengths and weaknesses, and the choice of which to use can depend on a variety of factors, such as the type of pollutant, the extent of contamination, the local ecosystem, and the available resources. The right method of bioremediation depends on the specific pollutant and the environment it's found in. Bioremediation isn't just a theory. It's already being used to tackle pollution worldwide. This isn't just a hopeful statement, but a reality. Now let's delve into some real world examples that highlight the successful implementation of bioremediation. Firstly, let's talk about the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska. In 1989, a massive oil spill occurred causing catastrophic environmental damage. However, bioremediation came to the rescue. Microbes were introduced to the polluted areas and they began breaking down the oil. It was a slow process, but bit by bit, these tiny organisms worked their magic and the area has since shown significant signs of recovery. Next, let's travel to India, where the Yamuna River was once heavily polluted with industrial waste. In this case, scientists used constructed wetlands, 
a type of bioremediation that uses plants to absorb pollutants. Over time, these wetlands have helped to purify the water, showcasing the power of nature in combating pollution. Let's not forget the soil revitalization efforts in Chernobyl, Ukraine. After the nuclear disaster in 1986, the area was deemed uninhabitable due to high levels of radiation. However, scientists discovered that certain fungi and bacteria could absorb and neutralize this radiation. Through the use of these organisms, parts of the area have shown promising signs of recovery. Further afield, in the Niger Delta, Nigeria, bioremediation is being used to tackle the oil pollution that has long plagued the region. Here, bacteria are being used to break down hydrocarbons, helping to restore the damaged ecosystems and improve the quality of life for local communities. These are just a few examples of how bioremediation is being used to heal our planet. From oil spills to radioactive soil, bioremediation has proven to be a valuable tool in the fight against pollution. It's a testament to the power of nature and its ability to recover, even from the harshest of conditions. Through bioremediation, sites once deemed lost to pollution are being brought back to life. Indeed, the potential of bioremediation is vast, and these examples are shining beacons of hope for a cleaner, healthier world. Despite its potential, bioremediation faces several hurdles. Like any technology, it's not without its challenges. One of the biggest obstacles is the technical complexity of the process. Each pollution scenario is unique, with different contaminants, environmental conditions, and microbial communities. This requires a tailored approach, making it a complex task to design and implement a successful bioremediation strategy. Another major challenge is cost. While bioremediation can be less expensive than physical or chemical cleanup methods in the long run, the initial outlay can be significant. It involves not just the cost of the necessary materials and technologies, but also expenses for expertise, monitoring, and maintenance. Then there's the time factor. Bioremediation is not a quick fix. It can take months to years for microbes to break down pollutants. This slow pace can be a deterrent, especially in situations where a faster solution is desirable or necessary. Despite these challenges, the future of bioremediation is bright. Technological advancements are helping to overcome some of these hurdles. For example, genetic engineering is being used to create superbugs, microorganisms that can degrade pollutants more efficiently and effectively. Furthermore, advancements in bioinformatics are allowing us to understand and predict the behavior of microbial communities, leading to more successful bioremediation strategies. Also, as we move towards a more sustainable future, the potential benefits of bioremediation are becoming increasingly recognized. It's a green technology that uses nature's own methods to clean up pollution. And while it may be slow, it's often more thorough, breaking down pollutants into harmless substances rather than simply moving them elsewhere. The road ahead for bioremediation is challenging, but the potential rewards for our planet are immense. As we continue to develop and refine this technology, we're not just cleaning up our environment. We're also learning more about the incredible diversity and adaptability of life on Earth and how we can work with it to create a healthier, more sustainable world. We all have a role to play in the fight against pollution. Yes, you heard that right. Each one of us, in our own little ways, can contribute to the broader cause of pollution control. And here's how. Bioremediation, as we've discussed, is a nature-based solution to our pollution problems. But it can't do the job on its own. It needs our support, our understanding, and above all, our commitment to reduce pollution. One way to do this is by reducing our own waste. Simple everyday actions such as reusing items, recycling, and choosing products with less packaging can significantly cut down on the amount of waste we produce. And less waste means less pollution for bioremediation to tackle. Another way we can help is by supporting businesses and industries that are environmentally responsible. These are the firms that prioritize green practices, that choose to dispose of their waste responsibly, and that invest in sustainable technologies like bioremediation. By buying their products or using their services, we're voting with our wallets for a cleaner environment. But our efforts shouldn't stop there. We can also lend our voices to the cause, advocate for environmental policies, participate in local cleanup drives, 
or even start your own initiative. Education too is a powerful tool. By learning more about bioremediation and other environmental solutions, we can help spread awareness and inspire others to join the cause. Lastly, remember that every little bit helps. Whether it's composting your kitchen scraps, picking up litter during your morning run, or simply turning off the lights when you leave a room, these small actions add up. They may not seem like much on their own, but together they can make a big difference. So let's embrace our role in this fight. Let's support bioremediation and other green initiatives. Let's do what we can where we are with what we have. Because it's not just about us, it's about our planet, our home. Remember, every small step counts in our journey to a cleaner, greener planet.